Good morning and welcome to our service this morning, which is Holy Communion on, on this Sunday, which is the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Congregation, please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to intercede for us in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Let us pray. We take a moment of quietness to bring before God those things which we want to confess and to ask his forgiveness. And together we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory of collect of today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you above all things, 
may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You remain standing to hear and to receive the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Mark in the 6th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King Herod heard of Jesus' disciples casting out demons and anointing with oil many who were sick and curing them, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and for officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of our ever-living and ever-loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Outside the crucifixion of Jesus, this story of the beheading of John the Baptist must be the saddest story in the entire Gospel. It's basically about hatred triumphing over respect. King Herod, we are told, did respect John the Baptist, even though John had publicly denounced him for marrying Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. Yet Herod feared John, we are told. Listen again to the words. Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man and protected him. We're told he liked to listen to him. Isn't it true that there can be people who, perhaps without realising it, may act in a similar sort of way? Those who would listen to the gospel, 
but not necessarily receive it or act upon it. I think immediately of the parable of the sower. When the seed falls on different kinds of soil, representing the different kinds of people and the different levels of hearing the word. Herod would have been willing to listen to John, but not willing to stand up for him in his hour of need. And so his birthday came round and he threw a banquet for the courtiers and the officers and his family and other people from, from around the region of Galilee. His daughter was there, who's also called Herodias, after the mother, and she danced before King Herod. And the dance pleased him, so much so that Herod said, I will give you anything you want, even half of my kingdom. The trouble was that it was an oath that he had sworn, an oath that could not be revoked. She went to her mother, what shall I ask? And of course, the mother, not about to let go of a golden opportunity like that, she said, the head of John the Baptist. And the girl went back to Herod and said, give me the head of John the Baptist. And then she added on a platter. In other words, the enjoyment to be gained out of sheer humility from John the Baptist. She was out for revenge for her mother and her mother wanted revenge as well. And that passage ends with these stark words. I read them again. When John's disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. That's all it said. A stark reminder of hatred and revenge and what it does to you. Yes, as I said, outside the crucifixion narratives, this must be the saddest of stories recorded in the Gospel. And it stands as a solemn reminder to you and to me of what hatred and revenge can do to a society or to someone. Hatred is a cancer. A cancer that kills people, a cancer that tears nations asunder. And the world knows about that only too well. But on the other hand, the message of Jesus is one of peace and one of reconciliation and one of forgiveness. Because Jesus knows that that's what builds up a people, that's what builds up a nation, that's what builds up a world belonging to God. But the question is this, do we just hear the message of the gospel or are we willing to receive it and willing to act upon it? We stand for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Petrina will now lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Lord, we believe by Jesus' Lord healing and respond to people's needs. 
and so we know that you want to be and well be for all. We pray for all who suffer with their mental health, for all who have no brightness in their lives or have no hope. We pray for the sick and those in hospital, thinking of all who are suffering because of COVID. We pray that this disease will be brought under control everywhere. Lord, where there is grief, and where grief is hard to bear, bring comfort and healing. We pray for carers, and especially for someone with special needs is unable to access the support they need. Bring help to carers within the health service, who are themselves in need care. We lift up to you all who are needed here in this group of prayer requests and ask for your blessing. And in silence we bring to you now those in our thoughts who are in need. Lord, where it is possible, guide us to be part of your answer to our prayer for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the forgiveness of sins and for the hope of eternal life. We rejoice in the fellowship of all the saints and remember before you our loved ones and friends departed from us. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Petrina. We join together in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed, through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We greet one another. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here, His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. 
You made us in your own image, male and female you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. Blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.